So a while back, I made a poll asking if you would like to see a video from me every now and then that wasn't centered around horror. And the majority of people who took that poll said they wouldn't mind that. So for you guys, this is that video. Hello everyone, my name is Michael Kratiger, and normally I make horror content. Horror is one of my biggest interests in life, and I always love talking about it. But I do have other interests, and the name of this channel is Michael Kratiger. So it seems only natural that I'd make a video every now and then about one of my other interests. If that's not something you want to see, and you're only here for my horror content, please let me know in the comments, and I will gladly make a separate channel for other things like this video. But for right now, we're going to try this out. Another one of my big interests in life is science and engineering. And one of my favorite creators on YouTube who always talks about science and engineering is Mark Rober. Mark Rober is an ex-NASA employee turned YouTuber who seems to have made it his goal to get more and more people into science and engineering. Which, obviously, appeals to me. Watching Mark Rober over the years has definitely reinvigorated my love for science. So whenever he announced that he was offering some kind of class or package you can buy that'll help you improve your skills as an engineer, I always wanted to try them. But usually I ended up not having the time or money to dedicate to them. That is until his most recent video. In the video of Vortex Cannon vs. Drone, he announced the Hack Packs. A subscription box geared towards adults that promises to improve your skills in engineering no matter where on the knowledge tree you are. My wife and I usually watch the videos together, and when we saw this announcement, we both instantly knew it'd be something that would be great for me. But I was worried that we wouldn't be able to afford it. And then my wife went to the store page, shoved her phone in my face, and basically all but told me to go ahead and just subscribe to the boxes. And this is why I love her. So I went ahead and subscribed, and started wondering if his claims were true. If I would actually be able to learn something from these hack packs. And that is what I aim to find out. My plan is, is that every time I get a new box, I'm going to document my journey through building each one and finding out if Mark can actually make me think like an engineer. I'm supposed to get a new box every two months, so that's about the frequency you can expect to see these. Again, if you don't want that, let me know in the comments and I can make a separate channel to post these videos onto. Now, before we begin, I think it's important to highlight where I am currently on my skills as an engineer. I have no formal education in the engineering or science fields. I did take a semester of computer science before ultimately deciding it wasn't for me, and then that's when I decided to switch to electrical engineering, which I didn't actually end up taking any classes for before I ended up dropping out of college. But I would like to go back, I just don't really have the time or money right now. But if my choices and majors weren't a dead giveaway, I have a strong interest in science and engineering. Science was my favorite subject in high school, and my favorite TV channels as a kid were Cartoon Network, and then the Science and Discovery channels. I also love tearing apart things to see how they work. I love working on computers and modifying old consoles. Hell, just before I started writing the script, I got through fixing an old cassette deck and installing a new drive onto this computer because the old one failed and I wanted to put Linux on it. I have some experience with science and engineering, just nothing formal, and I fully recognize that my knowledge is very baseline. So I'll be putting myself firmly in the casual category. But enough about me, let's actually get into the box itself. Alright, so here's the actual hack pack itself, which honestly is a little bit smaller than I thought it would be. I'm not a knock at it, I just thought it'd be bigger. Uh, hey, hey, I bet you guys want to see where I live, don't you? Just kidding, I can't. So this is the uh, IR turret here. This actually is the small scale model of the bigger one he made in the video where he announced these things. Um, go ahead and get into it. Very interesting. So in the same video, he said that he's gonna include, he's gonna randomly choose a box to include like a, uh, a silver ticket to get you like um, money towards going to college. Wouldn't it be funny if I got it. Eh, it looks like I didn't, but that's all right. Oh, cool. There's a little QR code here that says "Build along with Mark Rober." So I guess there's just like a video to go along with it. This is an instructional packet. Basic pieces. Yeah, this is straight up an instructional packet. All right, cool. Tells you all the pieces that should be there. The electronics, tools, and accessories. Okay, cool, so it comes with its own tools. I might use my own, just because I like my own, but it comes with everything, so that's nice. Collect all six gear badges to complete a planetary box. Gearbox. 
Oh, cool. I guess it's like some kind of reward for uh, completing everything. I want to take a look at this again real quick because it kind of—it looks a lot like uh, like 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 Legos would be, which is great because I am a huge, huge fan of Legos. But okay, yeah, let's see here. This looks like the actual barrel that you put all the foam darts in. You've got a bunch of electronics. Looks like a remote. Three, um, just a lot of servos and stuff. I believe these are no, these are screws and stuff. I thought these would be darts. That looks like the Arduino itself. So we'll put that to the side. Ah, here we go. Here are the actual darts uh, for this guy. Here plates that you're not moving to. I think this actually might be also the thing for the planetary a gearbox. Ah, and here's the... I think this is the Arduino itself. Nope. Okay, so... Pretty nice of acting experience, gotta be, gotta be honest. Do I need... Do I need solder for any of this? I have a soldering iron, um, but, uh... <laughs> Uh, I'd rather not, because I'm not the best at soldering, but I guess we'll just scan this and we'll figure out what uh, where to go from there. Okay, so I watched the introductory video. It's a video of Mark thanking you for buying the product and introducing it, and then he got to something about the project which I, I really liked. So if all you want to do is build the project and then be done with it, you can do that. It comes with a remote so you can manually control it. So if you don't feel comfortable with coding or you don't want to learn coding, you don't have to. But coding is definitely my biggest gap in knowledge, so that's definitely something I want to try my hand at. Something else that Mark explained is the reason behind the name Hackpack. The idea behind the boxes, as he tells it, is to get you to try more things in the engineering spectrum. Like altering the codes to get it to do different things, or even making physical modifications like adding a proximity sensor to the front for targeting purposes. As someone who loves to modify anything and everything, that's pretty cool. Mark even has a forum of people who are using the hack packs for you to share ideas with. And the same forum supposedly also has people who created the hack packs themselves. So you can ask them anything if you have a question. That's a pretty nice support system. One big question I had going into this was how he was going to handle the coding aspect of it. In order to code anything, you need a program where you can write the code and then compile it onto whatever you're putting it onto. Like, was there going to be a specific program he's going to have me download? Would there be a license to get some kind of high-end program for it? Um, but it looks like that's handled on the Crunch Labs website. For those of you who don't know, Crunch Labs is the uh, business that Mark has started that puts out these hack packs and all these other things. When you go to the URL, it has a link to a place called the Coding Console. There to help you out, as Mark explains in the intro video, is an AI assistant dubbed Mark Robot that you can ask questions. Like, hey, what does this specific line of code do? Or even get help with troubleshooting. Also very cool. In the video, they also go in depth on the different parts of the turret, how they work, why they're there, and how they all work together. For someone completely new to robotics, that's really awesome that they explained all of that. The next part of the video walks you through building the turret. However, as stated before, I love Legos. So I prefer just to use the instruction booklet that came with the turret. And I'll build it right now. Okay, so here's everything just kind of laid out, ready, ready, ready to go for me to... Can I speak correctly? Okay, so here's everything just kind of laid out and ready to go. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start building. And something very interesting that Mark said in his video is that this should take about an hour to build. <laughs> I hope you know what you've done, Mark. You've given me a challenge. And I, and I humbly accept. I'll build your little turret and we'll see just how fast I do it. We're starting at about 5 p.m. Let's get started. You didn't see that. See that either. 
Am I recording? I'm recording. Professional YouTuber here. Okay, so in the instruction books, it says in the instruction books it wants me to test fire this. So, I'm sorry, it says I have to. Oh, shit, they actually went, they actually went pretty far. I completely missed the camera. My aim is fantastic. Alright, last piece is on, which is this little eye guy. Take that, Mark Rover. I did it in this amount of time. I don't know exactly how long it was, but it was not an hour. Way under. Booyah! Alright, it's all built and working. Sort of. So I turned it on to test it out, and then oh, this okay. happened. Um, I think I think something's wrong. I thought it had some kind of wiring problem. Okay, so let me just completely pull these apart and redo them. And then I remembered while I was building the turret that I turned one of the servos out of the way so I could properly screw it in. But then I turned it all the way around instead of returning it to the position that it was shipped to me in. These servos have something built into them which communicates with the brains of the robot to tell it what position it's in. My guess is that since I didn't return it to its original position, it probably thought it was upside down. And it slamming down in either direction was it attempting to correct itself. So I pulled it apart, corrected the servo, put it back all together, and it didn't try to destroy itself. now. But then I had a new problem. Okay, now it's not doing anything. It wasn't reading inputs. I triple checked my wiring and I determined that I had it correct, but it still wasn't working like it should. I then thought it might be getting some interference from my office. The robot uses infrared light as a means of communication from your remote to the Arduino. It's the same technology that's in most TV remotes. IR is incredibly susceptible to interference if you have a strong enough light source shining into your IR sensor. I was testing the robot in front of my four computer monitors in my window. So I took it downstairs to show my wife and I was able to control it better in our living room, but it would still lock up and refuse to take inputs. And even if it had worked downstairs, it still wouldn't explain how I was able to control it just fine before I corrected the servo. I finally figured out that the ribbon cable here came loose and was causing the robot to act up. So tip if one of you out there plans to subscribe to the hack packs, on the turt, these ribbon cables that connect the bread box are pretty loose and get yanked out relatively easily. With the robot built and fully functional, it's time to move on to messing around with the code. There's a whole crash course Mark has for Arduino Basics, and he recommends that you watch it before trying out the coding console. So, allow me to do that real quick. Okay, so if I'm being honest, that really wasn't what I expected. The gist of the video was to think of microcontrollers like Arduinos as advanced electrical circuits, which is actually a really cool way to think about it. I never really looked at it like that, but yeah, I guess that would be exactly what they are. But it was interesting because he didn't really teach you any of the specifics around coding. He showed us what startup looked like in the code and what a loop looked like, and that's about as specific as he got. He went on to explain how to get code from your computer to your Arduino, uh, describing resources you can use if you have further questions. For actually writing the code, he refers you to the online coding console they have set up, to the AI they have there for writing and troubleshooting, or using Arduino's website for access to simpler lines of code, like the code that actually handles communication between the microprocessor and the servos. I did learn that Arduinos are coded in C++, which is good to know, and I didn't know that before, but I still don't know C++. So I decided to try out the coding console that Punch Labs has on their website. 
I plugged in my microcontroller, turned on the breadboard to give it power, and... The website isn't seeing it. Huh. Okay. Through some looking around on the website, I found this question mark, and when you click on it, it gives you a guide on getting the drivers to allow your computer to recognize the microcontroller, and also allows the website to see it and edit it as well. Okay, maybe that was obvious to some people, but I definitely would have liked a click here to get started notification or something. The console is set up like this. There are three tabs for you to choose from. Level 1, Level 2, and Level 3. Level 1 doesn't actually allow you to change any of the code. You can only look at the code, which is actually a little more helpful than it sounds because the code is full of notes that tells you what each line of code does. Level 2 allows you to change some values of the code, like how fast the turret moves, but it does not allow edits to the base code itself. Level 3 unlocks the code and lets you do whatever you want with it. As mentioned before, the online coding console has its own built-in AI assistant, Mark Robot who is actually a lot more helpful than I thought it would be. When I was having trouble with the robot not doing what I wanted, I decided to give the AI a try and ask it for help, and it actually gave me a pretty helpful list of things to check out and troubleshoot. So, thumbs up for Mark Robot. After going through all the videos and resources, I felt a little stuck. I had a robot, access to the code, and Mark encouraging me to get to coding. But I still felt like I hadn't really learned much. Certainly not enough to get to writing my own code. I talked about it with my wife, who is actually a software engineer, and this is what our conversation was like. Yeah, I just kind of feel like I didn't learn much. Well, what do you want to know? Well, I mean, how do I tell the board to recognize that there's a motor attached to it, and when to move the motor? You have access to the code, right? It, yeah. Are there notes? Stuff left by the author telling you what the lines of code are for? Yeah... Then you actually have more to go off than I do most of the time. What? Okay, so I get what Mark was trying to do now. He's giving you all the tools you need to get started, and it's up to you to figure things out and further your knowledge. He wants you to get used to finding things for yourself instead of someone feeding you the answers and holding your hand through the whole thing. That's smart. Well, guess I got some messing around to do. This is gonna be fun. I feel like when I was a kid and I'd dump out my big tub of Legos onto the floor and just find out what I could make from the random bits and bobs. However, you'll have to tune into the next video to see my progress as a coder, which will likely be when I get the box in two months. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.